What's going on guys and welcome to today's presentation. We're going to focus on sprains, strains and fractures. We're going to talk about medical management as well as complications involved in each. So we're going to start by discussing the pathophysiology behind strains and sprains. I'm sure most of us are familiar with a sprain or the term sprain, but a strain on the other hand is seldom talked about and strains are injuries that affect either a muscle or a tendon. Okay, so the ripping of a muscle or of a tendon. Okay, so both of these complications are related to intense activity, sports, and even accidents or traumas. Also, strains and sprains have three degrees which they can be classed as. For strains, a first degree strain is characterized by inflammation and pain. A second degree strain being the actual ripping of the muscle or tendon. This is going to cause even more pain, okay guys? And the third degree strain is the complete rupturing of the muscle or the tendon. And this is the most excruciating pain that it can get, as well as internal bleeding may occur. Now, as for sprains, a first degree sprain, this is categorized by minimal pain and tearing of a ligament. A second degree sprain demonstrates even more tearing in a ligament, which will cause even more pain. And lastly, a third degree sprain is completely tearing of a ligament. Also, with all of these sprains, edema will be manifested, which can cause a complication known as bursitis and tendonitis. So in the image at the bottom right, you can see here that this is a tendon. This red part right here that is inflamed is tendonitis, inflammation of the tendon. Tendon. These may become present through these injuries. Now, management for strains and sprains is going to start with something called the RICE method, not eating rice. Now, RICE is an acronym that stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Rest is important for up to three days, and this allows the ligament or the tendon to heal, guys. Ice serves as a pain reducer by constricting veins, which will then prevent even more fluid buildup at the site. Now it's going to be important to apply the ice for no longer than 30 minutes, which can be done three to four times per day. Excess use of ice can cause soft tissue injury and we do not want that. Lastly, elevation is going to decrease swelling and pain because this allows no further circulation of fluids to the area, okay? So we're gonna wanna elevate it to prevent circulation there. Also, functional support is going to be implemented, which are things such as braces or wraps, which will keep proper alignment of the extremity also, exercise therapy is going to be important because we don't want full immobilization of the extremity through the healing process. And exercise will also provide feedback whether or not the individual is returning back to normal function. Okay, guys? Now, NSAIDs are going to be used to provide that pain relief as well as decrease inflammation, which is a reason there may be fluid buildup. Fluid buildup may be from exudate, and this is released when inflammation occurs. Now, surgical management can be a route to go if the damage is extensive, like in our third degree strains and sprains, in which sutures will be used to connect back either ligaments or tendons. It's going to be important to fully immobilize the area for four to six weeks after a surgical procedure and then implement physical therapy, okay, for proper healing and evaluation. Now, complications that can occur due to the strains and sprains are things such as bursitis, which is inflamed bursae, tendonitis, which is inflamed tendons as seen previously, something called compartment syndrome. Now, compartment syndrome will be discussed later on in this presentation, but it is characterized by an increased pressure within a compartment of the body, which is usually caused by bleeding or that edema that may be seen, that fluid buildup causing compression in a compartment. This buildup of pressure impedes or obstructs blood flow, which will result in serious tissue damage at the affected site, guys. So we've covered strains and sprains. Now we get to fractures and fractures are breaks within bones, the disruption or break in the continuity of bone. So causes are things such as trauma, motor vehicle accidents, sports, falls, definitely deficiencies in vitamin D and calcium, as well as deficiencies in bone density, like the disorders listed below, Paget's disease and osteoporosis. Now there are more types of fractures and I touched upon them in my skeletal system video, but here are some examples again. A complete fracture describes a complete break in bone, so the entire cross section of the bone is disrupted. An incomplete fracture is also termed a green stick fracture, and this is simply the incomplete disruption of a bone, okay guys? Closed fractures are fractures manifested as being closed, not out of placement or protruding out of the skin. They're closed. On the other hand, an open fracture is the total opposite. 
this type of fracture penetrates the skin and is also termed a compound fracture okay open you could think skin open now medical management for fractures are things such as narcotics and anti-inflammatory medications we're going to want to provide pain management guys these people are in pain also antibiotics are implemented to prevent osteomyelitis in the case of open fractures okay osteomyelitis is bone infection that can cause numerous complications moving forward so we're going to want to give antibiotics for that guys also surgery is implemented to correct alignment if there is any dealignment present and maintaining that alignment is going to be huge when managing fractures guys so that the bone can grow back normally now we're going to want to immobilize the extremity by using casts or traction in traction the use of weights and force are used to reduce the fracture and relieve muscle spasms examples are skeletal traction and skin traction and we'll touch upon those soon in skeletal traction things such as pins screws and wires these are secured to the bone by means of surgery and weight is applied which applies realignment okay in skin traction a flexible boot or belt is used and this is going to maintain the extremity now complications that can occur due to the fracture are things such as that compartment syndrome we talked about and we're going to take a look at it shortly but another complication is vte also termed venous thromboemboli which are blood clots that form in large vessels now this is a very serious problem guys because the clot can travel to the lungs and it will further classify the complication as a pulmonary embolism or emboli which will impair gas exchange and proper respiration also a fat embolism can occur and this is usually manifested within long bones okay the diaphysis part of the bone is where the medullary cavity is and that is where the fat is stored guys so if the bone breaks at the diaphysis part of the long bone the fat can get caught in the circulatory system further clogging the vessels slowing down circulation and causing something termed pediche which is small tiny red dots that manifest on the skin now it can also travel to the lungs causing that same pulmonary emboli we just mentioned okay back to management for a second here's a better look at traction and again it helps guide body parts back into place holding them steady so this is furthermore going to decrease muscle spasms as well as provide stabilization and realignment of the fractured bones this is compartment syndrome and this is a better look at it now compartment syndrome is characterized by an increased pressure within a compartment of the body due to either fluid or bleeding this can cause the permanent loss of a limb if not identified and treated right away because the compression of nerves and blood vessels can lead to tissue necrosis okay speaking of compression compartment syndrome is one of many things that can cause neurovascular compromise and neurovascular compromise is a complication as a result of decreased oxygenation and blood flow to body bodily tissues okay and this will lead to that lost limb pretty much tissue necrosis will occur due to the lack of supply now a procedure called a fasciotomy will be done to relieve the pressure out of the affected compartment so if there is a cast it will be removed and this fasciotomy will take place also to make note of guys it is here where traction is going to be important to prevent any more complications to the neurovasculature okay well thank you for tuning in and watching this presentation hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you guys are staying safe out there like subscribe comment and i'll see you guys next time